So if you're running a tower at full range, does it make sense to cross it over at 80 hertz? Yeah, because does most it... towers most towers don't really have usable, meaningful SPL output down to 20 or 30 hertz. You know, if you look at mo most towers are kind of rolling off below 30 hertz and they just don't play very loud below that. But the advantage of a tower over a bookshelf speaker, even base managed, is you have way more headroom, way more output, way more sensitivity in the crossover region where you're crossing that speaker over to the subs. So now that tower will play equally as loud to, let's say, you buy this monster 13-inch THX uh, subwoofer from Monoprice, as opposed to using a 6.5-inch two-way bookshelf that can only play maybe 95 dB. Now you get a tower that could play to 105 dB peaks, and you, you're better matched with your subs. You have the dynamic range from 20 hertz all the way out to 20 kilohertz. You tell me those Revel speakers aren't banging hard at 40 hertz. They uh, they don't have a lot of bass. No, they traded sensitivity for low end bass. Not like the Salon twos. Um, they have decent amount of bass down to 40 hertz, but below 30 hertz, no, not really. Like if if I was really doing a full no, range like, system, like 40, 40, 45. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're pretty they're pretty okay. tight there. So to match with those, like would you not drop your crossover around 40 or 45? If it's a two if it's a two channel scenario and it's a small listening area, like no, one no, or two home theater. home theater. No, I would I would probably still I you know, it depends. It depends on the room. If it's a really large room, I might run them full range just to get the extra output below 80 hertz to blend yeah. in with the other subs. You get more modal density that way. Oh, wait, but oh so you said so you said run those full range speakers at full range mm -hmm. without crossing. I just want to be sure because that's what I do most of the time. But it I really never, depends. Nobody, nobody really so, talks about it though. So I set up I set up a system <clears throat> for my uncle that was in a 50 foot room and he had towers that were similar to the Revels and he had two subs. And at first I was going to run the towers at 80 hertz crossover and then just use the subs for the rest. But I actually found that running the speakers full range um, and, and using the PEQ, I got better modal density by having the towers plus the two subs. Yeah. In the 40 to 60 hertz range, I got better integration. So I ran them full range. Yeah. That's what it I'm really depends. About. Yeah. Well, yeah, it depends. I mean, obviously, if you get, have less than capable speakers, of course, yeah. 80 hertz, I would say. But I still think, I still think just putting in 80 hertz kind of like, a like blanket statement saying 80 hertz, you just gotta fuck, you just do that. I would say for 90% of people, 80 hertz is is just easier because most people don't know how to integrate, yeah, uh, tower base with subwoofer base. It gets really tricky if you don't time align it properly, it, it could do more harm than good, right? Right, right. Because I find like some of the speakers I reviewed, like especially like those Sopras when I had those as rear speakers, those oh, yeah. ones, I was letting those things rip like full range, and and there's Bass comes out of those back speakers. I don't yeah. care what you say. If there's a car coming back there, you feel that back speaker rumble up front. Whereas if it was cut off at 80 hertz, you don't you don't feel that. It feels like I mean, it's coming in, everywhere. In theory, from... it'll dump to the subs. And you know, when you have like the trend off of the storm audio processor, mm -hmm. you could redirect the bass from that channel to the closest sub. So I mean that's yeah. there's you can't do that with a receiver. You know, you yeah, gotta yeah. get to the level that we are at with these processors, yeah. but but I think I think if your surround speakers can handle it, you notice a big difference between cutting it at 80 hertz. Because if John Wick is shooting that shotgun in the back speaker, instead mm -hmm. of it coming from all your subs, it comes from that speaker. Like you just you hear it, it's like boom, right behind your head. Yeah, like I don't feel, know. I you mean, feel I've, I've always run surrounds at base managed and I didn't really see a problem with that. But I've never run uh surround speakers that have a lot of bass. Like I've got the RBH, the new. Um, I don't even Wait, know what the model is. What do you got now? You got, some, you got some killer surround speakers now. Oh yeah, I've got dual eights and the AMT, but those things and, play super loud. Like they well, get reference level. Yeah. But you you don't have them across that eighty hertz. I know you don't. I do. What the fuck, dude? I do. I do. And they got dual eights in them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they don't have a good output down to forty. Oh, they do. No, um, I would say down to 60 because they're, they're only four inches deep and they're sealed. So you can't get a lot of low end bass with a, even with those big drivers, you're just getting higher sensitivity in the usable area, but they're purposely made to hang on the wall. They don't take up a lot of space. 
Now I've got these speakers, these RBHs, the red ones, same woofers, three eighths in there. They have a lot of bass because they have a huge box and they're tuned. They have two ports on the back. Okay, so I just want to get it straight. You got dual eights in your surround speakers, and you're just still cutting them off at 80 hertz. I feel like you're missing out. Then I feel like you are. Let me I look. Like let me are. look at my bass management. You have like the second best processor next to mine. So the second like, best. I mean, listen come to on, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will give you this much. The Trinov is definitely more field tested than. I don't know why I can't log into my process. I must have the wrong IP. The, the field, uh, the uh, Trinov is definitely more field tested than the Storm. The Storm is kind of newer, but it's got a lot of potential. Yeah, so does the Trinov. Growing it does. potential. My wife, it just does, like my mom says, it's got growing potential. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the base management in the Storm. I'm pretty sure I have them set. I, I, oh, here it is. All right, let me, we'll settle this right now. I'm logging in. I wish I could share share my screen. Actually, I can, right? Yeah, yeah, just yeah, Streamyard. All right, hold on a second. Let's share my screen. You could do this on the Trinov, right? Yeah, the storm took everything from the Trinov, of course. <laughs> nice, <laughs> come on, nice. So let's look at what we have here. So I got some pretty advanced base management. I'm running my main speakers large with All LFE right. routing. First off, up. first off, can you change the background to black? What background? The, that screen you're looking at. Uh, I don't know. Why is it you don't like the way it looks? If you're in a home theater, you don't, oh, want, yeah, to, yeah. You don't want that to be white. Listen, yep. where's Storm yep. at? I know they ignore me for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Um, know, you know, that's a good know. question. I will I will look into No, I have all my surrounds at 80 hertz, but this isn't final anyways. I've just been I've been more focused on getting the front sound stage perfect. There's a substantial amount of bass that comes out of surround channels. Especially, you know what? I'll run the experiment for you. I'll run those at Do full it. range, and 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 you tell me what movie clips to listen to, and ready, we'll come ready back. player one, definitely ready player one. King Kong, ready scene. player one, yeah. King Kong runs behind your head during that scene. There's uh -huh. substantial amount of bass back there. Mm -hmm. I mean, my sub should pick that up. I've got two subs in the listening area, but you want to feel it behind your head. You know, oh, I will. Just, oh, I do. Yeah. I've got a sub on my riser platform. Well, you want to you want to hear the foot stomps in those speakers going boom, 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 tracking. But you're going to hear below 80 hertz is going to do much better with your sub than I, I think your you, surround I think, speaker. I think you've been crossing over 80 hertz for too long. Like, I don't think you quite understand the concept of getting that bass that moves from one surround speaker to the other one. And like yeah, feeling okay. it travel. Like you feel the travel instead of just hearing the travel. You feel it. All right, we could we could run yeah. that experiment. I'm open to it. Yeah, I think you should do that. I will definitely I do that. And those speakers are capable. They're they're good. Oh. They're good down to at least 60 hertz. 